Hello, I'm Richard Vobes. I'm the author of Splidge the Cragflinger, and in this video, I want to tell you how Splidge the Cragflinger came about, where the idea, how it popped into my head, where it came from. Well, it was some time ago, back in, well, 1988. Yes, that's right, 1988. Many, many moons ago, I used to perform mime. You know what mime is. This is the business where you pretend that there's things that are there that are not there, like an invisible wall, or I'd be pulling invisible rope, or pulling something like a dog or something on a lead, walking on the spot, trying to race against the wind, all those sort of things. I used to be a mime performer, and I rented a small office and used a dance studio. And in this dance studio where I used to rent this office, I would practice and perform my mime and get the, a show together, and then I would go off and perform around the country. Well, one day, it must have been in the autumn or something like that, when it was cold and it was wet and raining. Well, if it was wet, it must have been raining. Well, I was sitting in the cafe at this dance studios, having a cup of coffee, and I thought, well, what can I do today? And I figured I know what I'll do. I'll write a story. I had no more ideas about what the story was going to be than that. I was simply going to sit down and write a story. And I had a, a pad, and I had a pen, and I just started to write down the first thing that came to my head. And very often stories are a bit like that. They can evolve from a simple idea, like a title or a theme. And all I did was I just wrote the very first thing. I thought, well, I'll give it a title. I had, didn't, again, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. And I wrote Splidge the Cragflinger. Now, I didn't know who Splidge was. I didn't know what cragflinging was. And I didn't even know what a crag was, to be honest with you. But I wrote that down, and so I had to find out. So I then started my story, and the first line I put down was the first line that is still in the book. It was always raining in the land of Gud. Then I realised I had a bit of a problem. It was always raining. Oh, golly. That means everybody in the story is going to get soaking wet. They're going to need umbrellas. The houses are going to have rain splashing down on the roofs. They'll probably leak. And then that whole idea started to come. Yeah, what if there was this dishevelled city where the place leaked, there was a king and his palace leaked, and then there was some sort of tournament that took place, and Splidge got a job to become a cragflinger. And so that whole idea started to come. And, and here is, no, not that one, here. This is the uh, original typed-up version of my very first... Uh, book. Now, I have to say, this was a small book. It looks bigger because it's all typed and double spaced. And I got a friend of mine to type it up because I wrote it all in longhand. Imagine that. And it was aimed really at much younger children than the final book that we've got now. And that was because at the same time as performing mime, I used to present a program for the forces for the armed forces, well, not for the soldiers themselves, of course, but for the children, their children who were stationed abroad. There was a company who made these programmes, and this was before the days of the internet, before the days of satellite television. Do I look that old? Maybe I do. Anyway, we, I made this programme, and for those soldiers and their families who were stationed abroad in places like Germany and Cyprus, they imported English programmes so that the English families could watch them. And one of them was a children's programme called Percy Peevely's World of Cartoons. And I played Percy Peevely. I wore this very silly mask and a, a wig and had a long nose. And I was I always talk like this. Hello there, Percy Peevely here. Welcome to the Percy Peevely World of Cartoons. And Percy would have a, a little adventure and then he would introduce a cartoon. And then he would come back, you'd see Percy again in his basement studio, rummaging around, battling with Mr. Todd, who you never really saw. He was a character that would ring up. And, oh, hello, Mr. Todd. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Todd. I'll make sure we get that programme on air immediately, Mr. Todd. Bye, Mr. Todd. 
It was very, very silly. And it was aimed at sort of a mid-range of kids' ages, I suppose, from, from 6 to 12. So we'd have cartoons like Banana Man and things like that. Anyway, I thought my little story, Splidge the Cragflinger, could be a bit like... Well, there used to be a programme called Jack and Nori, where interesting presenters would read the story to the audience. And I thought we could do a programme a bit like that. Well, satellite television came along. They didn't need to have these programmes made anymore, so my story got shelved. And it stayed shelved for many, many years. And I thought about making it into an animation, making it into a feature film, but all that's very difficult and costs money. Plus the fact I really believe that the best pictures are in your own head. So if you write a story and you read it, you get these wonderful pictures in your head. So in the end, only about, well, as I record this, it was I suppose about 20 months ago now, I started writing the proper version, or what I like to call now is the proper final version of Splidge the Cragflinger. And the result is, here we are, the Royal Tournament, book one. But there are subsequent adventures. Book two, the, um, the land, what is it called? <laughs> book two <laughs> is the Purple Death. And book three, which I'm in the middle of writing, which is why I'm slightly confused, is the, um, the Isle of Gid. So there's three books, and there may well be more adventures. It depends if you like it. If you like it and you want more, then you need to let me know. So here is this one, which is all put together. In the early days, when I first started writing, a friend of mine called Bettina, who was at the dance studio in my hair, um, drew some pictures of Splidge. And nothing like how Splidge is today. Great big egg heads, it's amazing. And then there was uh, Groggins and uh, the King. And there was a one of Doreen, but I seem to have uh, lost that. But anyway, these were just early illustrations. Nothing had been finalised. And of course, now that the story is much more for slightly grown-up children, shall we say um, from 9 to 12-year-olds, with a much detailed story with the evil Baron and all the other interesting characters that come along and try and cause chaos and mayhem. Um, I wanted to the characters to be a little bit more lifelike than these rather strange ones. So there we are. It was a long time ago that Splidge was first thought of, along with a number of other ideas I've got for books, which I now want to type up and put into story form. So thanks for watching this video. There are going to be more videos, so do enjoy those. And have a look around the old website at splidge.co.uk. Thanks for watching.